what's up welders welcome to another episode of adventures in welding i'm paul thanks for joining me i'm going to start right off the bat saying we are up to 705 subscribers today that's awesome remember when we get to a thousand we're giving away that miller digital elite hood as you can see i got my left paw bandaged up i had my other carpal tunnel surgery done so no welding in this video today instead we're going to talk about something else a special request we're going to talk about more welding symbols and how to read them. So if that's something you're interested in, stick around. I hope you'll find it interesting. If not, hey man, this is YouTube. There's a hundred thousand other things out there to check out. All right, a basic primer in case you've never seen any of this before. If you have, skip ahead about a minute and we'll get into the other stuff. The welding symbol. Alright, this part right here is the arrow. And it connects the reference line to the arrow side member of the joint or arrow side of the line. This area right here is the reference line. And this is the tail, which gives the specification processes or other references. Now, when we said uh, this is connected to the arrow side of the line, what that means is if we have a joint, like for instance, this, and it's calling for a fillet weld, hanging down below the line that is the arrow side and that would mean you would put your fillet weld in here however if the welding symbol is above the line that is called the other side and your weld would go in this area now along the reference side you're going to find things like the depth of the bevel which could be say a half inch or your groove weld size which you would find there in parentheses above the reference line you will find your finishing symbol whether you're to grind it or hammer it or whatever your contour symbol then you're going to find your groove angle. So if the groove is to be 30 degrees or something like that. And finally below that would be your root opening. Pretty simple. We're going to get into some more in-depth stuff now. That was just a primer in case you uh, were completely unfamiliar. All right, let's talk about groove welds first of all. Gee, oh, there we go. Groove welds. There are many different symbols for your groove welds. We'll just have one big long reference line and we'll put them all on there. We'll start with the square groove or a scarf joint, the V groove, the bevel. Now you notice the difference. The V groove has two angles. The bevel has a perpendicular line and a bevel. The U groove, the J groove, the flare V, and a flare bevel. Now these lines are on the other side, but they can also be just as easily on the arrow side. That's always important to keep in mind So you know where exactly you're supposed to put your joint. Next up, we will talk about the fillet weld. Again, this is our reference line, our arrow, and our tail. And the fillet weld is a perpendicular line with an angle. It can be that simple. That's it on the arrow side. 
you can have it on the other side and this will be telling you to weld both sides you can also have them like this which would be staggered fillet welds and we'll get into that also now if you're working in the field you might come across surfacing welds which is basically building up the surface you might use a hard surfacing rod to do that so your welding symbol may look something like this now what that's telling you to do here is to lay down surfacing welds of one eighth of an inch so if we were to kind of do a projection drawing of this and pardon me because I am by all means no artist you know these are your beads so that is what that's telling you to do in the surfacing weld three two one all right, let's talk real quick here about the tail, which can give you a lot of information about what you're doing. For instance, let's say you are to do a spot weld, quarter inch, and in the tail section, you see R S W. Now, what does that mean? Resistance spot weld. It could also be EBW, electron beam welding, or any of the welding processes. But that's one thing that you're going to find in the tail of the weld, telling you what process to use. You just have to memorize these. They're not that hard. All right, let's talk about plug welds. Let's say that this is your drawing. So this is a plug weld on the arrow side calling for a 45 degree plug weld. Now what that is going to look like when you do it is something like this. Your included angle here is going to be 45 degrees and your weld is going to fill up that area like that now let's let's talk about a groove weld and we'll say This is your symbol here. This is calling for a double bevel. Remember, here is our bevel. See, we have the perpendicular and then the angle. A double bevel of 45 degrees. So, what you're going to end up with, and again, please pardon my drawing, is something like that your weld is going to fill up you know this area on both sides and your angle here 
this angle right here, again, is going to be 45 degrees. Now, what I wanted you to get out of this is see how it is showing you where the bevel is. It's telling you on this one the bevel is to be on the right side. Had they drawn it like this, then you would have had to make your bevel on that side. A little bit about contour. If you have your weld symbol, with say a fillet weld and a line that just means a flat contour and it can be on both sides either side something like that now other symbols you may find is a G with a curved line and that means to grind a curved line or you might find something like this with an M which means that is to be machined or if you see a C then it is to be chipped there's probably 30 more different ones, but that's just to give you an idea. Grinding, machining, chipping, flat, all different ways that the bead can be contoured. Now, another thing you have to look for in build-up joints is in the tail where it might be telling you what type of weld we're doing. So, for instance, let's say... Let's say that's your symbol. You've got a, uh, a rod here with the sleeve over it, and it's calling for a surfacing weld, and it says it is to be axial. Well, what that means is if this is your rod here, then your beads are to run this way around the rod. What you may also end up running into is circumferential, in which case they expect the beads to be run this way. Just more information that you can find in the tail of the weld. You have to be looking at the entire weld symbol to understand exactly what is being called for. Just another couple of quick things here and I'll leave you be for your day. The circle means to weld all around. So if this is your joint here, and your weld symbol has the circle and we'll say it's a fillet weld then you are to weld completely around the available faces of that joint and if you ever see the little flag that means it is a field weld and is to be done in the field probably 20 feet up in the air hanging by one foot, welding between your legs like some sort. All right, guys, just another little bit of information on weld symbols for you. There's so much out there that it is going to be impossible to cover in one, two, or even maybe ten videos. Uh, I got the information from this book, which I used in welding school. There's plenty of good books out there. You just got to remember to pay attention to everything in the welding symbol, especially the tail. In case it has a symbol like that that you've never seen before, that one means 
get the hell out of my shop. See you next time.